you know, you got to have the courage to think bigger than where you're at now. Most importantly, you got to have the courage to think big. You have to have the courage to be real with yourself and identify where are you truly struggling with? What are you truly struggling with? Right. And have the courage to say, I'm going to do something about it. <clears throat> right. Or, you know what, maybe your business is good, but I feel like I can do more. I feel like, I feel like my business can impact more. I feel like I can serve more. Right. I feel like there's more gifts that's God that God has given me to where I can set a help in 10,000 people. I can help 10 million people. That takes courage to think like that, but also that takes courage to take the action to get after it. So the first thing is having the courage to think about this stuff and also having the courage to take action on it. Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to a brand new episode of the None of Your Business podcast. Sean and Lacey coming at you just as we are each and every week. And hey, if you're watching us on video, debut today of the brand new None of Your Business podcast set. Super pumped up. You guys are in for a real treat today. It was every now and then somebody comes along who we are able to catch them sort of on the upswing um, we get a lot of people that are already like the you know the, the the fireworks that have already gone off, and so we bring people on, and you're like, I know who this is. But the problem with that is that you kind of know what they're going to say, right? They've already established their thing, and they're putting out tons of content, and they're on all the stages. Well, today we're catching somebody who is a rising star. I know that I'm super excited because you're going to know about them, ton about them, you see them all over the place um, in just very short order. And I'm super happy that we've captured him like a leprechaun, grabbed a hold of him. While we can. And we've right. got him here on the None of Your Business podcast. For everybody that's interested in real estate, um, he's a realtor. He, ha he he sells real estate, but that's not why he came on the podcast. Although it, we may, may dive into that a little bit, but he's also moving into this space of coaching, motivating, creating community, community inspiring people to new levels of greatness in their business. Um, he has a phenomenal group that I was fortunate enough to be able to share with. It's called the Elite Harvest Coaching Group. Um, and he's developing some really fascinating concepts that we're super excited to dive into. You ready? Yeah, I'm His ready. His name's Devin Denofa. Let's bring in Devin. What's up, my friend? Oh man, what an honor, man. This is uh this is incredible. Talking about like, you know, being in the journey to, you know potentially be at the tables of you know the the tables that you guys are on and the platforms and stuff like that and this is just one of those pivotal moments that i'll remember of hey you know just sharing with somebody else the journey up oh, well then you know then this time came where i got the opportunity to speak on the podcast with, with sean and Lacey, which this was a milestone moment for me and and i just uh, appreciate you guys giving me this opportunity because it's awesome and i love following you guys and i'm inspired by what you're doing every day too well, we begin every podcast with every single guest with the same question. And, and it's easy for people to maybe see what you're doing, especially if they follow you on social media. And it's easy to potentially think like, well, I mean, that's Devin. And, you know, Devin probably has, you know, a lot of fortunate breaks. He's probably been favored by his parents and probably got his uh, first real estate realtor job working for his dad. And then probably sold his Everything first property to his to him, brother. Right? Yeah, <laughs> <of course. laughs> right? Like it's easy to think that, but what we've really come to notice and and learn about all of our guests is that um, there's many bumps in the road. Tell us a little bit about your story of how you get here. How do you end up being in this place of prominence and this p place of recognition? Um, and and what are some of the bumps and lessons you've learned along the way? Oh man. Um, so, yeah, I come from a, a, I always like to say a, a working class family where, you know, they always provide it, you know, everything, everything that I need it, right? But not necessarily anything that I want it on top of that, I had to go and work for, right? And, you know, I never like to say, you know, I come from nothing like, no, they, they you know, they provided me a, a very loving parenthood and stuff like that. But I grew up in Philadelphia, South Philadelphia. Um, and then, you know, I, uh, 
coming up in South Philadelphia. When we then moved to Northeast Philadelphia, I mean, my my mother at one point worked at Blue Cross. My dad um, was an exterminator, then a janitor, used to ma- manage chiropractic offices, but then uh, you know got injured on the job working as a janitor. Um, and that's important to me because you know from what I've been able to do through the foundation that they worked very hard to set me up. One of their biggest things was moving us out of Philadelphia in a rough area to New Jersey to give me a better opportunity to pursue my dreams and, and have better surroundings. And that was one of the things that was always important to them. And that was what they asked for out of life. And I always like to say, man, you got to be conscious of what you ask for, because sometimes you could ask for uh, something too small, right? And it's like, man, if you just would have asked for something else, you probably would have accomplished that too. So they, uh, you know, in high school, they moved us over to, to New Jersey, which was awesome. And then um, kind of the, the road to real estate, when I moved to from Philadelphia to New Jersey, you know, one of my original dreams was going into playing college football. When I moved to New Jersey, I happened to be a starter the sophomore year because Came on an all-star team, sophomore year, junior year, all-star team, rated Golden 11. Senior year, whole new coaching staff came in. I was the captain. Um, and, you know, what happened was in the beginning, and by the way, I had letters to colleges. And, you know, for self-accountability, I just wasn't, you know, I was comfortable. I wasn't trying my hardest. Next thing you know, I didn't finish the sprints in spring training. And the coach called me out in front of the whole team and said, Devin, because Devin didn't finish first, the whole team's got to do up-downs. And at that point, I was so frustrated because I felt like they were trying to, you know, uh, show their leadership by being tough on the captain, right? And that, that was trying to how they were trying to flex their, like, what they were about and their power. And at that point, you know, I was just a hothead back in high school. So ran the sprint, finished first, and under my breath said, are you effing happy now? Sure enough, the coach heard it and was like, what did you say? Kicked me off the field. I threw my helmet off. And then it turns out that I was kicked off the football team as the captain with hopes and dreams to play college football. So that kind of flushed down the toilet. Then I was like, all right, man, what am I going to do? You know, that was like something I always wanted to make my parents proud, like college football. I wasn't really a a smart student. I wasn't getting the, the straight A's so that that college scholarship based off of degree or uh, grades was not uh, in my cards to say the least. So the first thing that I saw was, you know, at that point I was 16 years old, started off as a bus boy with a restaurant, Carabas Italian Grill. The GM made six figures. Nobody in my family has ever made six figures. So I was like, all right, I don't need the college degree. This is my path, right? So I was like, you know what I'm going to do? All right, what, the, what is the next step I need to do? All right, well, I need to become a kitchen manager. So I worked up. I talked to the kitchen manager. I was like, hey, I want to work in the kitchen for free. I know that this is what I need to do to become a GM, and I want to speed up this process. He's like, dude, you can't work for free. We got to give you something. So they paid me ba- uh, you know, pretty much next to nothing so I can learn and expedite the process to get into the kitchen. Fast forward, I became the youngest kitchen manager in the whole company. Carabas is a big franchise national, so it wasn't like a small mom and pop shop. But I was the youngest kitchen manager in the company. Then became the youngest front of house manager in the company. At that time, I was 20, 21. I was like, man, my, my parents are proud, never went to college. And I just wanted to show them that, you know, hey, you raised you raised a successful man. You know, like I just wanted to make them proud. And the very the next stage was being a GM, owning my own restaurant. And that was what I felt like I would make it. Next thing you know, as a young manager, you know, I, I – you know, at that point, I learned the hard way. I was still young. You can't really hang out with the teammates, right? The uh, the staff found out the hard way. One of my G, uh, the JVP found out that I was out with with the teammates. Got in trouble for that. Next thing you know, got fired. And now that was my uh, my next dream was to be a GM. Bang, taken away like that. Um, so then I was like, right, what am I going to do? So then I got a job in uh, being a bartender, right? And then uh, you know, at that time, I had a good friend of mine who wanted to get into the pizza business. And he approached me because he knew I had experience in it. Next thing you know, we uh, I was like, all right, let's go. So we became partners in the pizzeria out here in South Jersey. And at that time, um, I was bartending but before the transition to that. And I was still trying to figure out, man, what do I want to do? I always thought big. I always knew that I wanted a big life. And I never forgot. My parents always said, man, you know, the taste you have, you better have a good job. Right again, because they always provide what I needed, but anything extra, any any high end stuff, any like I always had to work for, which was a gift. 
that they gave me. And it, it really paid off in the long run. But I always was clear how, what big life I wanted to create. I never wanted any limits. You know what I mean? And as I was watching TV, I came across a show called Million Dollar Listing. Now a day is being in real estate. You know, it's like I kind of knew a lot of it was script now, so I don't enjoy it as much as I did when I first saw it. But what it did was it cast a vision on what I can truly do without a college degree, what's available, what type of life I can create in that specific business. And I was like, man, I love houses. I have an interest in houses. Look at the life that these people built through this career and they didn't need a college degree. So that's when I got my real estate license. Um, and at that time I was, I got my real estate license. I was running a pizzeria. Um, and then, you know, I, I can sit here all day to, to continue to talk about these little hurdles, but my next stage was, cause it was very hot to me was, all right, I, I was, I got my real estate license just to see what that would be like. And I told my parents, I was like, man, all right, that's it. I'm going to buy pizzerias. That's, that's what I'm going to do. This is your successful son. He's going to own a bunch of pizzerias. One of my mentors that was a partner in that pretty much owned it, but this was like a test run for us to be a partner at owns a ton of them. And we, then I learned the hard way that it wasn't a profitable location. We were in the, in a mall, right? So it, started telling it, it taught me about what business is truly about like the numbers what's profitable location rents all that stuff so after a year we found out that it just wasn't working out it wasn't a profitable location so then he's like listen man i know you want to do this well i got another spot in center city philadelphia it's down in the food court you can buy into this and this can be yours start calling my mom i'm like mom i'm gonna buy a pizzeria like again just tying into showing them that i'm gonna do something big to show them that you know their investment in time and love was they were going to be, you know, they were going to be happy about all that time and love that they gave me. And they're going to be rewarded in the future by my success. So I told her I'm going to be a pizzeria owner, mom. I'm going to see it. Went there with my buddy, saw the pizzeria. I didn't even care what the numbers were. I just wanted to say that I'd done something on my own. So next thing you know, as we're about to, to make this whole deal happen, the food court, because it was the bottom of the food court, said that they can't lease the new business owners. So that went down the tubes. And at that point, what I did have was my real estate license. I'm like, you know what? This is the deal. Nobody is going, I'm not going to have my future in anybody else's hands ever. Right. And I got this real estate license and this is what I'm, I'm going to go all in on real estate because I know it's all up to me. Right. It, I'm going to bet on myself. And that is the best bet that I know that I'll ever bet on because I know that I will be resourceful. I know that I will not stop until I make it work. And that was what kind of led to my journey, you know, in real estate and I had no family, nobody. It was just what, what field could I be in to build the life of my dreams that nobody in my family has ever had. And now I sit here and, and stand in, you know, in a neighborhood. And again, there's always levels to all type of success. I'm 35, but you know, the, the dream, the dream house that at that time, I always have a talk, become your hero. You know, the hero version of myself at 2021, 20, that hero, I am that person now, right? Everything, the life, the house, the beach house, the farm, the family, the wife, the kids, like that version of myself, I, I became, now I casted another version of the hero version of myself, you know, and, and what's possible, I casted a new vision based off of being around people like yourself, where I see like, man, this is this is what I thought a big life looked like. But now through people like Dave Meltzer, as I'm relentless with trying to learn from the absolute best, my eyes open up to more of what's possible. And now I have a whole new version of what that hero version of myself looks like that I'm chasing now. And real estate is one of them. I Ooh. love, I, love <laughs> I was like, I love your story. I mean, man, I was like, give me more, give me more. But I, this idea, you know I was like, oh, it was, it was like this, like you would go build up and it was really good. And then, and then it was like, a hurdle. Oh. No, but here's what I want to know, actually. <laughs> they kicked him off the team because he didn't run the sprints. Well, he said a little comment under his breath. Come court. on, what's going but on? But listen, <laughs> listen, this is really interesting because at the very beginning when you were talking about your parents, you said something and you said, you have to be careful what you ask for because sometimes mm. you ask for things that are too small. You love that stuff. And yeah. I, yeah, I love that stuff. I'm, I'm all about mindset. And I'm wondering where in your story with all of these things that happened, did you have the real that realization for yourself that maybe you were asking for things too small? Maybe the pizzeria in the food court was too small for the life you were meant to have, and that's why it didn't happen. And did you ever recognize that and make a shift or a change? 
Yeah. So the, you know, what really helped me in become better as an, in real estate, as an entrepreneur was diving into personal development. And I did that by accident. Um, when I used to live in South Philly, I don't, one, for one reason or another, you know, I guess I didn't, for some reason I, at, at that time there was, you know, if you wanted to listen to music, you had to load up an iPod. Well, I didn't have an iPod. Um, so I ended up getting on uh, YouTube. And what I would do is I would go to YouTube and find a song because I didn't like load up a playlist or whatever. And um, I was listening to a hip hop song. And then out of nowhere, there happened to be a video of Eric Thomas, E.T., the hip hop preacher. And then I clicked on it. And as I was working out in the gym, it was my first time I've ever listened to a personal development video. And I then was very aware to my mindset, how I felt while I was listening to that and became addicted. And then I listened to that more and more. And I start listening to other people. And then that's when my journey started in amplifying my mind, thinking bigger, looking at life differently, looking at how I'm living differently, looking at how I'm treating people differently, looking at how I'm casting my future differently. And to answer your question, when I started diving into personal development is when it really made me kind of uh, rethink the way I look at my future and the way I cast my future and how big I think and, and going after what I truly love and, and, you know, not give it like after looking at that, I hold myself completely accountable because I'm a different version of myself. Now, everything that happened in my life was because of me. You know what I mean? Like, I know it may sound crazy. Like, dude, you just didn't run a sprint and they got kicked off. Well, you know, like at the end of the day, I shouldn't have said it. Yeah. At the end of the day, if I was the captain, I should have led by example and I should have never finished last or I should have finished first. Right. So, but I also believe that God has a plan. And every time something bad happened to me later on, I can connect the dots. Like Steve Jobs has an amazing, uh, he did a commencement speech at a college because you can never connect the dots looking forward. You can only connect them looking backwards. Um, and then he finished off. You just got to trust that with faith and with future, whatever, you know, that, that things are going to work out. And as I connect the dots looking back, it's like, man, God really did some amazing work on me and is still working on me now because I ain't got all this shit figured out yet. But I'm on the path and I'm documenting my journey, you know, being the student of, of, of everything and, and continuing to grow and continuing to learn from people like yourselves and, and invest to, to be in rooms with people like you guys and the Dave Meltzers and all these other incredible people. I'm um, sorry, man. I know I start yapping. I, that was pretty much a long answer to a basic uh, answer that you wanted. But no, for the most no, part, no, it wasn't I love a basic it. question either. So it was, it yeah, was we good. love it. So, so obviously, too, now you are you you've been led to share this personal development. Um, so you have found your success, and I love watching you on social media and all the great things that you're you're doing. The farm is absolutely incredible. Um, but now you've decided you're not just chasing your own success. You are you're helping others to find success. Um, tell us a little bit about that transition, that move. Why why have you decided that you wanted to help other people to in in other industries to find this level of success that you've found in real estate? Um, you know, in real estate, there were certain things that I wanted to accomplish. That when I accomplished, it was just like all right, it's here and gone, right? Like as an example, I want to sell a new construction house. Went and sold a new construction house. It was cool, but then I did it. It was like, all right, it's like back to square one. Then I was like, all right, I want to build a new construction house. Went and built a new construction house. That was a pain in the, uh, I don't want to curse. That was a, a pain in the, you know what? And then I was like, all right, done that. That ain't fun, right? But then, you know, as I was coming up my real estate career, people would then, what, like people, just, what are you doing? And then I'd go and, and tell them. And then they were just like, their eyes would be wide open listening to me speak. And they're like, wow, dude, like you have a lot of passion. Like there's something there when you pour into somebody and teach. So then I developed a whole um, like weekly plan that I used to help me grow my business. So now when people were asking me, I was like, bang, I got a whole weekly plan that's really helped me elevate my business and my brand and me personally, personally and professionally. And I created it to, to be a very simple plan. And that's when people started having me go and speak to offices <coughs> that other companies would have me come and, and speak that plan. Right now it's called Growth Week. I'm actually going to speak in Atlantic City, uh, showcasing this, uh, this, this 
uh, personal and business success plan that I developed. But what happened was I never knew that coaching exists after sports, right? And this is a very common thing, right? And, and the funny thing is when people perform at their highest level, right, a lot of times they look back and chances are it was when they were doing sports and township or or high school or college or even the professional level. But when they leave, when they leave there, for some reason, they don't think to hire a coach to help them perform in the number one sport in the world, and that's business. Or they just don't think that, man, if I if I just invested in a coach, the right coach, there's people out there that can help me perform mentally at my highest level every single day to get the most out of life. So I never even knew coaching exists. And as I went on this personal development journey, I then started, uh, you know, and then I started doing this and, and coaching. And then Keller Williams was like, man, you need to be a coach here. And then I went through that journey. And then I started hiring coaches there and then started coaching there. You know, and then I was like, man, I just truly, this is what truly fills me up is literally changing a human's mindset and outlook on themselves, outlook on life, helping them get out of their own way and perform at their highest potential every single day. Um, that is truly fulfilling to me. That is like doing this, man. I'm in my flow state. Like this is like, I can do this until I literally have no voice. You know what I mean? And I got to start figuring out sign language, but like I am in pure bliss doing this. So I then became super aware and, and still practicing becoming aware to what I truly enjoy doing, what doesn't feel like work. I always tell people, man, if the money situation was solved, like if you didn't have to worry about money, what would you do for work? I would say it's the Harvest community. It's coaching. It's, it's really helping people like see a better version of themselves, go and chase their own hero, go become their hero. Like that is, that is my passion. So as I started looking into that, man, then I was like, all right, I want to start learning from the best in the world. It's a whole nother, you don't have time for this podcast to learn how I got in, uh, in a relationship with Dave. But for the most part, then I started, you know, learning from Dave, coaching with Dave. I went, you know, learn from uh, through a friend of mine, Randy Garn, referred me to to do coaching, performance coaching with Brandon Burchard. I wanted to learn how to do it at its highest level. And plus, I'm on YouTube University, learning from people like you. Like, all right, what are the other? Because I want, I don't want to just be one dimensional. I want to be able to help male, female, I, old, young. It doesn't matter, right? I just want to be able to know all the different ways that I can help somebody because there's a that's just my passion. That is, that is my passion to say the least. I mean, I think it's so important and, and I, I can hear the passion in your voice and I know it's so important to help people get out of their own way and move into this place where they can become the hero that they desire and are destined to be. And I know you have a method around this called C4. Mm. So can you tell yep. us a little bit about that and how that helps people, um, like you said, move into becoming their own hero? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, Man, and by the way, I just want to say that, like, I I say this and I speak like this for anybody listening. I'm I don't sit here saying that I know it all or whatever. Like, this is it's like doing this is like almost selfish because I it, like when I help other people, it helps me. When I learn from a show, like from you guys or from a Dave, like I need that. You know what I mean? Like I need it. It helps me. Like so, as I'm on my journey to continue to operate at my highest potential and learn, I also take everything that I learn and help other people. So it's kind of like the gift that keeps on giving. But I just want to share with people. Like I sit here and I'm always trying to learn. I'm always struggling because I'm always trying to <coughs> to grow and and become a different version of myself. But I came up with a, with a, uh, with a C4 method and, you know, through trying to help people the best way possible, I've also learned that we have to make it as easy as possible um, so that they execute. Um, but this could be used. It doesn't matter where you're at. It doesn't matter how successful you're at. <clears throat> if you use and go through this method, it will just help you get to that next level. So C4 method to become your hero. The reason why I call it C4 is because there's four C's. So, uh, you know, that wasn't the most, uh, <laughs> and not the hardest thing to, uh, to put together, but I'm proud of myself. I figured that out. So the first C is courage, right? Courage, meaning, you know, you got to have the courage to think bigger than where you're at now. Most importantly, you got to have the courage to think big. You have to have the courage to be real with yourself and identify where you truly 
struggling with? What are you truly struggling with, right? And have the courage to say, I'm going to do something about it, <clears throat> right? Or, you know what, maybe your business is good, but I feel like I can do more. I feel like I feel like my business can impact more. I feel like I can serve more, right? I feel like there's more gifts that's God, that God has given me to where I can, instead of helping 10,000 people, I can help 10 million people. That takes courage to think like that, but also that takes courage to take the action to get after it. So the first thing is having the courage to think about this stuff and also having the courage to take action on it. The second C is coaching, which is what a lot of people don't do. How you can compress time, how you can turn decades into days. There's multiple analogies that you can relate coaching to. Dave calls it the dummy tax. But at the end of the day, if you're trying to get somewhere, you know, one of the biggest hacks in life is finding somebody who sits in a position that you're trying to get to and invest to hire that person so that they can help you and share all the mistakes that they made so they can help you get there in half the time, right? So now there's two different types of coaching. There's tactical coaching, meaning that there's a specific thing that you need to learn about to get the recipe for, to get the steps for, or the model for, to take action on, right? And that is that is one specific uh, coach that you hire. But on the other end of that, which is ties into the last C, there's a performance coach. And that's where I found that my gift is, is helping you stay consistent on that path and, and battle the external distractions, the external voices, and everything else that can stop you from executing the plan that the other coach is telling you to do, right? But coaching is the second C. Invest in coaching. Invest to learn from the person who's doing exactly what you're trying to do. That is speed to success. And you got to invest <clears throat> most times to do that. Now, you can have mentors, stuff like that. But at the end of the day, man, if you don't pay, you don't pay attention. And two, to get the real accountability and, and the real all in from somebody who really wants to get you there, a lot of times you're going to have to invest in it. But again, remember, guys, coaching is not a cost. It's an investment, right? An investment is something that pays you back. And a lot of times, it multiply it times 10, times 20, times 100. A cost is something that you put out money and you get nothing. <coughs> Excuse me. You get nothing in return. Three is community, right? So, yeah, you can have the coaching, which is great, but there is something to be said when you're in a community of like-minded individuals that keep each other accountable, that support each other, that keep you on the path, that motivate and inspire you, right? And let's just say... You're like, I have a, a Fortune 500 company. Well, I want to build a Fortune 100 company. You know, there are communities out there, and I'm sure Sean can help with this, where you can be in a community of Fortune 100 entrepreneurs, right? And there is, you cannot put a price tag on what it's worth to be in a community of people who are either where you're trying to get to or on that path of what you're trying to get to. Community is so important. It's great for mental health. It's great for accountability. It's great for consistency, but find your community is another hack to stay on the path and execute the stuff that your coach is telling you to do, and uh, and it makes it a lot easier, gives you a lot of resources. Find your community. Um, and the last part is consistency, right? Because none of courage, coaching, or community matters if you're not consistently on this path. No matter what happens, you are going to remain consistent. No matter how hard it gets, you're going to remain consistent and stay on this journey until you have your breakthrough, right? Well, Devin, I hired a coach, and he sucked. I didn't learn anything from him. Okay, well, hire another one until you find the right one because there is somebody out there that can help you. So many people make these blanket statements. Well, no, oh, coaching, it's BS. Well, you hired the wrong one. Or there is talk about self-accountability. Most times the people don't – the students don't run the play, and then they blame the coach. But – I don't want to assume that at the end of the day, if you hired the wrong coach, hire another one. Be consistently on that journey until you find that right one because your future self will thank you for being on that path and never quitting. Man, we're going to have to bring you back. You've got so much to say and you're super passionate about it. And we, we agree with all those yes, C's too, by yes, the way. They're, they're like, simply solid. awesome. Yes. The four C's and an A. <laughs> it's super awesome. Um, Consistency accountability, is that the... <laughs> yes. We, um, we, we have to wrap up our podcast, but I want to make sure that everybody uh, knows where to connect with you. 
Um, tell them about the um, the show that you do with David Meltzer. How can people yeah. connect in? How can people find out about your community? And how can people plug in with you? Absolutely. So um, Facebook, Instagram, Devin Denofa, D-E-V-I-N, D-I-N-O-F as in Frank, A. Uh, me and Dave Meltzer have an um, a Instagram live show called The Real Deal Real Estate Show. The reason why I came up with that title is Dave wanted to do a real estate show with me. And he was like, you know, he, it was, it was cool, man. He was like, Hey, I want you to think of the, think of it. Like, what do you want to do? Right. And you know, what I wanted to do, the, the topic of the real deal real estate show is to showcase real stories, real inspiring stories of real estate entrepreneurs, mm -hmm. right? Not the million dollar listing, not the flip or flop, the single mother, who, you know, grinded it out, started a real estate career and became successful for her family. Not just realtors too, by the way, it could be builders. It could be investors, anything, real estate, somebody that has an inspiring story for two things. One to share an inspiring entrepreneurial story for inspiration, but two to show people what's possible in real estate, no matter where you start and no matter what direction you want to go. So it's the real deal, real estate show. That's every Thursday at, um, I think this week it's at 11 AM Eastern. We have an incredible guest there. Um, as far as my performance coaching community, it's the harvest performance, uh, growth community. Um, you can find us on Instagram. It's a uh, harvest performance community. Uh, Facebook, Harvest Performance uh, Coaching Community. But if you follow me on Instagram, chances are you're going to see a lot of the Harvest content and how you can be a part of that community. We got some amazing, incredible entrepreneurs that come in there as guest speakers. Mr. Sean Dill was one of them. Impact at many. My community members are still talking about you. And uh, a lot of the people that you've had uh, are our man Chance. Uh, Chance, he came in, spoke, Dave. Uh, so yeah, man, that's just a community where we're focused on personal and professional development and we're changing a lot of lives in there too. So yeah, you got to get uh Christian Galt, Aaron Nash, all your RTA <laughs> peeps in there. Those are the, Aaron the was there. Are... Aaron was on. I got to get Aaron my man. Christian on. Love it. <laughs> yeah, they come in and talk about golf though. You know what I'm saying? Maybe you can go. <laughs> that's my, that's my golfing buddy right there. Yeah, Christian. Yeah. yeah. Devin absolutely killed it. what do you think? Absolutely. I love the C4 <laughs> method. I think that's killer. Devin, thank you so that. much for being on the podcast with us, man. Thank you for dropping your content, sharing your, your, your heart, soul, and spirit with all and of your our passion. listeners. Yes. It was super, super passionate, super yeah. uplifting and informing. We appreciate you taking the time to be with us. And you too, if you're listening or watching, hey, we do not take your time for granted either. Thank you for dropping in on the None of Your Business podcast. This one's going to go down in the record books as one of the best ones ever, but we're going to have to try and beat it next week. I don't know what we're going to do, but we'll be back again to give it a shot. Guys, All right, everybody. Say, thank you for giving. This means a lot to me. You know what I mean? Oh, and this our pleasure. Is, this is as, I, as I'm on my path to become my hero, the people that that you and Dave are share those stages to get to that spot, man. This is a pivotal moment for me. And this means a lot for you to, to give me a chance and trust that I could be on this podcast and deliver value to your audience. So this means a lot for me and I appreciate you guys doing that. Well, absolutely. You. you did not let anybody down. It was absolutely awesome. And we'll definitely have you back again. We'd love, love to continue it. the conversation. Well, all right, everybody, we'll be back again next week trying to beat this one, but we have set the bar pretty dang high. Make sure you tune in next week for a brand new edition of the None of Your Business podcast.